Hello everyone and welcome to the channel and to this build series where I will build a UV curing station for my 3D resin printer. In this first episode I will make the design, 3D print all parts and start putting everything together. Final curing is an important step in the post printing process when printing with a UV resin 3D printer. Until now I have been using a UV fluorescent lamp and a battery operated display turntable. The setup is far from ideal, so I decided to build a curing station from scratch. This project has been something that I have thought about for a while, but I didn't have any clue how to approach it. But after some research I found this great project on Thingiverse. It wasn't exactly what I was looking for, but it was a great inspiration to kick this project into motion. My first idea was to remix it a little bit. I reused the gears and turntable and I only made some small modifications. But for the rest of the design, this basically led to completely new design made in Fusion 360. So you can say that uh, things kind of escalated. Okay, so the design consists of a base which incorporates all the electronics a DC motor, gears and a turntable. The power source is a standard 12 volt DC switch mode power supply made for LED strips. On top of the base there will be a detachable cover with acrylic sheet windows. The UV curing will be done by approximately 100 UV LEDs that are placed on two towers on top of the base. The control panel provides a user interface, very similar to a microwave oven actually. There are start and stop buttons, an encoder wheel for setting the timer and a 1.3 inch OLED display. There is also a piezo buzzer to give an alert signal when the timer reaches zero. Since I'm a complete noob in Fusion 360, the design took almost two weeks, working evenings and weekends. I probably made every mistake possible and broke every design rule in the book, but in the end, I got the design together. Kind of. I decided to use PTG filament instead of PLA, since I was a little concerned about the temperature of the LEDs. PTG is a little bit tougher than PLA but it's also a little bit more expensive. I don't own an FDM printer, but I had the opportunity to borrow my employer's Prusa i3 Mark III S on evenings and weekends for this project. After a couple of failed test prints, I was starting to get a hang of it and I could start to churn out all the different parts. Everything was printed at a layer height of 0.15 mm with a 25% infill. I used the Prusa Slicer software for processing the STLs and to generate the G code for the printer. The prints took ages and in the beginning I had to go to the office and babysit the printer to stop it if the print crashed. The longest print was the base and it took almost 21 hours to print. But at that point I got an okay to take the printer home over the weekend so I can keep an eye on it. The buttons and dials for the control panel was done using my Anycubic Photon. Everything was designed in Fusion 360 and I used the Cheeto box for slicing. I used Anycubic Ray Resin for the print. The details turned out really nice after washing in IPA and final curing. 
and I can easily remove the marks from the support with a sanding stick. After all the parts were printed, it was time to dry fit the whole puzzle and check that it was possible to assemble everything. Most parts fitted together nicely, but I had to reprint the top cover three times to get a decent print. And the end result wasn't perfect, but it was at least possible to make it go together with the rest of the frame. The towers for the LEDs are designed to be screwed onto the lid of the base, and there are holes for the cables as well. The turntable, gears, pinion and holder for the motor came out nice. I hope that using PTG material will make them durable. The base has a couple of places where I had to use support material, like the overhang of the gear and the hole for the C13 power plug and power switch. The support material was not too hard to remove, but I had to use a pair of pliers and a hobby knife. Okay, so let's start to put things together. The assembly started with the control panel, where I used a piece of prototype PCB to mount the tactile switches and the rotary encoder. It was a little bit fiddly to fit the key tops and dial, and I had to sand down the sides to get some clearance in the front panel. The OLED display is a standard 1.3 inch item that fits into the screw posts. I didn't have any self-tapping screw when I assembled this part, so I used recessed M3 screws instead. But the posts are made for 2.9mm self-tapping screws. And yes, that start button kept falling off and bugging me during the whole build. The control panel submodule seems to fit, but the placement of those fasteners was not ideal. It will be a little trickier to assemble that part than I first thought. The C13 power plug fitted without any problems, and so did the magnetic sensor for the cover. The power switch needed some adjustment though.
The power supply have two M3 inserts, so the recessed M3 screws enter from the bottom. The next step is to check the fit of the DC motor, the gear and the bearings. The fit is quite tight, uh, but it seems to work. I have also checked that the gear connects to the turntable. It seems okay, but the turntable is a little bit wobbly, so uh, maybe I have to do something about that. The design of the post with the cover sensor magnet turned out to be a complete failure on the other hand. It couldn't have been worse, to be honest. Okay, second try. Much better. And I can glue in the magnet as well. Great stuff. I oversized the slot for the magnet a little bit, so uh, I would make sure that it would fit. But I was a bit concerned about the wobbly turntable, so I decided to redo the lid of the base. It's the bin again. Okay, third try. So much better than before. I also moved the connector pins for the buzzer to the opposite side of the PCB, so I could connect them with the cables. After attaching the control panel to the base, I used some ribbon wire to prepare the connections for the electronics. I assembled the motor and turntable transmission, and after connecting the motor leads to the 12 volt DC lab power supply, I could verify that the turntable design is working. Next step was to connect the power supply and the wiring between the C13 power plug and the power switch. I decided to add some shrink tube to the connectors because I didn't want to have high voltage terminals open in the housing.
After connecting the leads, I did a quick test to check that the power supply was delivering 12 volt DC. And everything seems to work just fine. Okay, in the next episode I will continue with the electronics, the control software, and I will put everything together. But uh, as with most projects, things didn't go exactly as planned, but I got it all sorted in the end. So, stay tuned for the second and final episode, where I will finish this project. Goodbye for now, see you in the next one.